So this is just going to be an informal video as I kind of kick the tires one last time on my Supermicro Super Server. Um, what do I mean? I'm about to kind of break it down and rebuild things, uh, move hard drives around, and try to shut off my four plus year old server I called Visa and move everything over to the Super Server. That means a lot of drives are getting moved. So you'll see um, it complaining. Could be because it's powered off. <laughs> All right. So let's get started with that. Uh, how do you power on a super micro product? You just go in to the IPMI interface. And when I turn it on, you're going to see the change in the watts. So right now I'm running a, a laptop three monitor. So let's call steady state. I don't know. Two. Okay. 252, I guess. Powering on the server. Now I should have turned on remote control. Let's get that going too. You'll see the watts did jump up a bit. And video just came on. And that's the BIOS screen. And it's going to begin the boot process. Notice you have power control here from remote control. Or IKVM it's called. All right, so we're going to have that come up. And it's going to take a little time, of course. And because I have a GPU card in there, a video card added, yeah, I'm at about 60 watts. I've got a single 3.5 inch drive and several SSDs in there. After it settles down, it uses a little bit less watts, a little fewer watts. Um, okay, so the BIOS screen is about to finish. The post sequence, power on self-test stuff, and it's going to start booting ESXi 6 shortly. And there comes the hypervisor. That's it. That's how the local UI is going to look through the VGA output or through this IKVM output. So again, the intent of this video is to show you a little bit of a kick in the tires of a fully configured super server and some of the benefits. Um, when we get back here, I've got some auto starting going on here. What I mean here is okay, I have one Windows 10 virtual machine that's actually going to auto start. There's no VCSA appliance or anything really important on here, just some stuff um, that I'm playing with really. All right, so once that comes up, the vCenter or vCSA appliance is going to see this ESXi host back online. A couple things I can point out with IKVM. You've got virtual storage. You can just mount an ISO at any time, which is pretty cool. You just browse your way to the ISO, you mount it, you say plug in, and now you got yourself an ISO. And you can install an OS that way, which is what I did. I actually installed... ESXi right now is on a uh, SATA DOM module or disk on module. In the SATA port is a little tiny uh, self-powered yellow socket on the motherboard. And it's running ESXi right now. All right, don't really need the local UI. Let's just go right to vSphere web client. All right, so if we hit refresh here, let's see if we can get the red out. Great, we have a responsive ESXi now. The warnings all just went away. Awesome huge amount of memory. Um, this VM is booting now. Looks like I should say booted now. And that's up. And what is this? This is Windows 10 on an SSD. Okay, so this is a VM. What's special about it? <laughs> uh, let me show you. For one, the performance is pretty amazing. Uh, if device manager, though, will show you the real tricks, as well as that network USB thing you just come up, saw come up. What's going on here is I've got some pieces of this virtual machine, machine passed 
through to the physical world, like the display adapter is a physical AMD GPU in there, pumping out pixels to three monitors that are in front of my eyeballs that I can't really record with Camtasia. So I'm showing you really the uh, fourth monitor display. Now those external monitors are not plugged in right now because again, uh, limitations in what I can kind of show you with Camtasia 1080p here. But yes, you can see the hardware is unique. How did I set that up? We head back over to vSphere web client, look at the settings of the VM, and it becomes obvious what I've done. I've got a PCI device by AMD passed right through. There's your video card and there's your video card sound. That's it. So I'm going to cancel. I didn't change anything. I'm just showing you what I've passed through. And if you've never seen VTD or VM Direct Path or uh, many acronyms for that thing, uh, here's where you do. Here's where you set it up. PCI devices for the ESXi host I'm on. There they are. If we want to edit the ones that are there, we can do that. And just to give you a sense of what's on the chipset of this motherboard. This shows you pretty much everything, which is nice. Uh, okay, can't quite get it all in one screen without the scroll bar, but all right. Now we if we sort by device name, I find that handy. Now it can really jump out at you. Like there's these two gigabit ports. That's obvious. I-350 they're called. These 10 gig ports are not in use right now. So ESXi 6.0. Let me show you the summary screen. And for some reason, there's a bug here. Click that twice and it comes back up there. 6.0.0B is what I'm on, this build. Um, so it's a recent update from early July and it's now uh, July 25th, 2015. And no joy in the networking, meaning you still only have two physical network, physical adapters. So the 10 gig is just not seen even with the latest uh, build of ESXi 6 hypervisor. Okay, so I've given you some sense of the, the fun stuff. Let's so, show you the storage. So when you have this many drives, uh, I don't have a NAS at the moment or an external data store. So either these hard drives are in system A or system B. System B, the one I'm migrating everything to. Uh, I do that so it's super obvious when I'm doing the motion and moving stuff around. Uh, keeps it simple for me to figure out what's where. <clears throat> so before this last uh, breakdown, a couple things I want to point out. Why do I have a cluster here? What's special about this cluster and why did I really need to do storage vMotion? I'm uh, sorry, not storage vMotion, full vMotion. I could move a running VM from one to another. Well, that's because of the VCSA appliance. Think about it. I had this ESXi host for over four years an ASRock motherboard Core i7, okay? Right there, there's your CPU family. And I wanted to move. And that means EVC mode right here. I had to dumb it down to the lowest common denominator, the lowest uh, CPU class, and that's the Sandy Bridge, Z68 chipset. That let me vMotion VCSA appliance right here. Move it while it was running. There's no other way to do it, right? You can't do it from the vSphere... Uh, client, you need the, you need the appliance running to do vMotion. Okay. So to keep things simple, um, I had to create a cluster and each member of the cluster has its EVC mode set to Sandy Bridge and that'll let a vMotion happen. So that's actually what we're logged into right now. The vSphere web client is logged into vCenter. So let's do a migration. Now, frankly, it's probably smarter to go back and do storage first because it asks you less questions that way. So if we say, hey, where do I want to put it? Well, guess what? I'm putting it over here on this SATA SSD SATA 3. That's what the 3 means rather than SATA 2 speed for some older SATA devices I have. Size and then brand and physical size of the media. So that's how I keep things straight. Okay, so now that we've picked a data store, it knows what it's server. That means the super server. Okay, so what else do you need to do with vMotion? Well, it looks like I missed something. 
VM kernel vMotion does not have any operational physical network connections. So I'm going to need to uh, go check that. Um, but before I physically walk over to the box, what are my options to look at how it's configured? Back over here to manage network physical adapters. There you go. One's at a thousand, the other one's down. So let me go sli uh, slip a cable in there. I'll be right back. So I'm just bopping all over the place, but uh, I put the cable in. If I hit refresh here, that should show up as a link that's now up. It did. Now we can do that vMotion again. Change both. Storage first. Next. Open the tree up. Point to the target hard drive I want to land on. Next. Samsung, actually, that's where I want it to go. Next. Okay. Uh, that's a little weird. Okay. Not sure what's going on there. Maybe it'll come to me in a second. I don't know, but I'm trying something different. Okay, that was weird. And do I want to do with high priority? Sure. Let's get this done. Okay, so now vCenter itself is running. And what do you want to do when you... It's always fun to do this. Come on, haven't you been doing that for the past decade? Doing a recurring ping. Showing vMotion as it happens. And it's also kind of fun to uh, bring up an interface. Showing you the actual console. Looks like I accidentally opened that twice, so let's close one of those two. Got a lot going on here. Okay, so that's getting moved. And it's getting pinged. And it's going to take a while actually. And we're at 28%. Okay, so while that's cruising along, I want to point something else out. Why did I have a network cable accidentally detached? Now let me show you why. Uh, the reason is I recently moved the server right out of the room I'm in. So instead of it being in my office, it's in a nearby bedroom. It's in a nearby room where I don't have to hear it or feel the heat of it or any of that. So that was this project here, moving my server away and using a special set of exact cables and USB hub to let it all be farther away from me. It did cost me $168 to do that. I work for hundreds of hours or thousands of hours over the next few years on this machine that I plan to have. That can grow with me all the way up to 128 gig. Right now I'm at 60 four gig of RAM. Uh, don't believe me? Let me show you. Uh, of course, you'll believe me when you see that I point to the host properties, go back to the summary tab, and there it is. 64 gig of RAM. Awesome. There's my CPUs. And uh, this is becoming a pretty thorough off-the-cuff tour. Totally unscripted. But let me complete the tour. How about monitor? Performance, okay, you see that, but hardware status, that's what you really want to see, right? If you've never used the Supermicro product, right out of the chute, works pretty well for all the uh, hardware monitoring. Uh, we are also experiencing an unplanned failure of vMotion. <laughs> I don't quite uh, know why. So, not sure what to say, let's just try it again. Migrate. This is actually my first few motions since patching to 600B. So, interesting. Okay, it's not complaining. How about we go to monitor? 
How about at the host level? So we saw the CPU there. And we're back at this. But we can go to performance for a second here. Go to live. Anything wonky, weird showing up here? Okay, you see the CPU doing something there. Is it booted? Um, I'll also point out this is a rather extreme VM. When I say extreme, I mean I've given it all the CPUs. I was doing some benchmarking, so not a great idea. There's eight physical cores. It's an octa-core or a Xeon quad-core, uh, sorry, eight-core. And uh, not smart to give a VM all 16 CPUs because there's hyperthreading turned on, right? So I already showed you that VM, but before I shut it down, let's just see if the vMotion finishes this time. And also, I didn't show you the kind of the, the special thing here. Okay, what are we looking at with keyboard and mouse? Whoa, look at that, right? A Lenovo keyboard, how do I do that? Because uh, usually you can't pass through keyboards, you just pass through things like USB 3 or network adapter, but VMware by default doesn't let you do that normally. So let's let's keep diving in a little here. Okay, that's just normal virtual machine stuff. Mm -hmm. AMD sound, the, the video card can do sound. Uh, how about the hard drive? Also special, a run core SSD. How the heck did I do that? So I'm passing through or RDM mapping my C drive. I've taken an SSD, I put Windows, I booted my super server from it, I installed Windows, and then I created a virtual machine. Okay, vMotion failed again. I created a virtual machine and it said, hey, Let's map or do a raw device mapping. There's a command I typed to get that uh, run cord. Whoops. Yep, the SSD, this OCZ vertex is what's holding the, the, the config file, but the run core drive right here at 120 gig size is what's passed through. That's a little out of scope of this video, but yeah, I set up a, a pass through of the hard drive and a pass through the video card is the gist of what I've done. So jumping back to this, what does it mean when you see a remote keyboard and a mouse? It means if I grab that keyboard that's next to me here, um, I should be able to show you that I'm actually attached. Now, okay, the Windows 10 driver is a little flaky at the moment because it's not even for Windows 10, it's for Windows 8. So I've actually rebooted this device by Sedna, it's called. It's a four port USB server that's gigabit attached to my LAN. And now you'll see it's auto connecting the keyboard and a Logitech mouse with a little dongle. What that means is suddenly my keyboard and mouse will come to life. So you're seeing um, some stuff that's a little rougher on the edges, but there you go. We've got the software back up. And uh, if you could see me now, I'm touching a different keyboard. This is my remote control keyboard, and now I'm touching the ThinkPad Lenovo keyboard here. And if we look at mouse, the mice, we got some VMware ones, and then we've got this Logitech that I'm actually controlling. Let's see if we can see that. Probably not. Uh, I'm not sure which mouse is which, but... Uh, yeah, because it's not a Logitech driver, you're probably not going to see the brand here. Well, I could look it up, Google that number. Okay, so what's the what was I planning on doing? I plan to shut down this VM and see if we've made our ESXi environment unhappy by giving all available resources to this VM. Gee, a great time for Windows to be performing updates while I'm recording a video for you. <laughs> All right. Notice it was also using 56 of 64 gig of RAM. So again, I was benchmarking. I wasn't trying to do something smart. I was trying to boot back and forth, boot natively to Windows 10, the same hard drive, or boot it as a VM 
you can do that. That's what's really special here. And I should show you that. So after I shut down this VM, I should just reboot the ESXi environment. And this time hit a, is it F11 to pick a different boot device. And I'll go ahead and boot Windows 10 right off that same SSD. So it's pretty cool. Um, remember what I said though, I really want to get a V-Motion done before I shut down this machine for its kind of last time before I move around a bunch of hard drives and so forth. The other thing I'd want to do is after this V-Motion succeeds, I'd want to say, um, let's see. Yeah, and then if I move hard drives, I want to eject hard drives properly from the old server. So that's a whole other topic. Um, probably not going to get all that done on camera. But basically the idea is, yeah, I've got inventory of a bunch of VMs on the other old ESXi host, right? And they're pointing to, to various files. I'm about to light up those same VMs over in a different host. So, different server. Wouldn't it be smart to go in and take all the VMs and just right click and delete from inventory if, I'm, if they're about to be moved. So things don't get confusing and they just re-add them when they get over on the other side. Uh, okay. And I'll also need to eject the hard drive properly from this old ESXi host. Let's see, is there a hard drive I can do that now on? A drive that doesn't have any VMs running. So on the A side, here's a Seagate drive and it's got a bunch of stuff. If I try to right click and unmount the data store, it's going to warn me right away. You idiot, you know, uh, you can't do that. All right. Select the host you want to unmount this data store from, and it's only showing it in the ESXi Supervert. That's weird because that's not the server it's on. Um, let me show you. If we go to this server, the old one, and go to manage storage the six terabyte is right there the western digital red so i don't know what it's talking about but uh that's that's sorry that's the four ter four terabyte c excuse me yep also attached um Hmm. 2168. I might be confused. I might have it mislabeled. I did move a drive around a week ago and uh, maybe I never fixed the label. So what we want to see is storage backing this. Let me explain. Go to summary for the Seagate. Related objects. Um, a couple of orphans and a VM1 called 81. If we click on host, we'll see what host this drive is associated with. It's on the super server. All right. So I already made a mess, right? I moved a four terabyte drive over to the super server. And what it did was it orphaned some inventory over on the machine I pulled it from. So this should simply be removed from inventory. to finish that bit of cleanup that I could have handled better had I thought to remove from inventory before I moved the physical hard drive from one ESXi host to another. So these are the kind of things you might run into in home lab. You move drives around, right? Um, be aware of that. Okay, so turns out I picked a horrible drive to think about ejecting. Let's fix the name right now. It's on the B side. Okay, back on the old host. Can I eject this? Well, what virtual machines are living on that? A whole lot of them, and one of them called Nakivo is up. Another one is not. Um, this one has Bezel up. Okay, so it's a lot easier for me to just shut down the two VMs.
Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing a V-Motion as well. So now that we have Windows 10 shut down, meaning that extreme VM, let's see if my V-Motion can finish this time. Because it does concern me. That's kind of a sign of maybe bad network health. Uh, I am running through an older gigabit switch in the room that the server's in right now, so could be something as simple as that, or not Cat6 cable, or or Cat5 instead of 5e, I don't know. Um, or it's just going to work now. Uh, I feel like it's probably more likely just my Ethernet switch, because um, the CPU is never very busy, even though I had that VM sucking up, or using all 16 cores, potentially. All right, so that VM, the motion's going. So where was I? I was going to show you how to eject drives. So I'd say this video is clearly someone who's experienced with vSphere 6, not someone new to it, because I have shown you a lot of stuff in the last 20 minutes or so. Okay, so all the VMs are evacuated, or turned off, not evacuated, from that drive, right? And as we look at that, now it's super easy to just remove from inventory. And I've got this video that kind of acts as my well, record of how things were set up before I eject this drive. But anyway, you get the idea. I'm cleaning up all the pointers from the logical place to do it, from the drive view. UI got, UI got a little sluggish there for a moment. I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, we're in the home stretch here. Notice I didn't delete any of them from disk. Got to be careful. Okay, that drive is now, excuse me, that data store we can unmount. It asked me to confirm, there's the name of the server. Remember before I could have made a mistake, right? It was mislabeled and this thing warned me. And it allowed it to happen. It unmounted the VMFS volume. Now I'm gonna hit refresh. There, it did it, inactive. What's next? There's actually more to it than this. You go to the host side you go to Manage Storage Devices. All right, let me go back, show you. We've got the disk, that's a four terabyte Seagate 3.5. We go back to the host side, and you can see the device is attached to that host. And here it is, four terabyte. And there it is. Detach. That icon doesn't really look good to me, but detach the selected device from the host. And there we go. So, assuming this vMotion succeeds, I'll be ready to uh, shut down and move that hard drive over. Got a whole lot of work done here. How's the vMotion looking? 46%. Getting some weird gray ones there. Let's just hit refresh, see what that shows. All right, they're gray because they're removed from inventory, I guess. So, a little weird that the log shows that. Okay, so if that vMotion finishes, I'm going to shut down and reboot the CSXI host like I promised I would and show you Windows 8, sorry, Windows 10 coming up. If I really want to push my luck, I should probably show you something to make you make it obvious to you that this is the same VM that's booting as a VM, or it's the same hard drive that's booting either through a virtual machine or physically, where the super server just boots Windows 10, like any old machine could. 
Let's back off the ram to something reasonable. I like doing this instead. There we go. 32 gig. And let's do something more like six CPU cores. Power on. Okay. The motion is still happening. We're now making things a little busier. VMs that have anything passed through, I've noticed, take longer to power on than normal VMs, and you can't V-motion them. So there are some gotchas. When you do this PCI pass-through business, there are some disadvantages. Oh yeah, <laughs> that wonderfully timed Windows Update stuff's happening. And this is build uh, 10240, presumably the uh, GA code that's coming out in a few days. So again, today's July 25th, July 29th, the new code should come out. I'm also going to point out I need to rebuild a Windows 10 from scratch on a two terabyte that I'm also going to be sticking in this server. Yes, you just heard me say two terabyte. Who cares? Well, we're talking about a two terabyte SSD. So that should be fun. <laughs> the new Samsung 850 Evo. Now, it's not really about fun for me. It's about, I have a <laughs> way too much data. I have a one terabyte SSD and a, a one terabyte D drive. And I want to just meld it all to a C drive and uh, take it with me on the go. Okay, so the same hard drive that you're looking at booted through VM, I can pull it out of my super server and put it in a laptop and hit the road with it too. That's something I'll be trying, so that should be fun. Okay, we can run benchmarks, we can you know do 3D stuff. This thing performs very well because again, it can pass three 4K monitor video outputs uh, out of its physical GPU. So yeah, it performs well. It's got the grunt, right? Uh, that's not exactly an amazing test, but a little more impressive would be this. We'll do a disk benchmark later. If I jump right in, And I think this one was pretty compelling, if I recall correctly. Bottom right, still collecting stuff. Uh, but yeah, it does extremely well. Benchmarks a little bit better when it's booted natively to Windows. But I believe the results were like within 5%, which is kind of awesome. Okay, so now it jumped down in the number of CPUs because we reduced it. So we've only given it six. There you go. Test, 3D, DirectX 9, I believe is kind of fun to show you. There you go, we got flying planes. Not doing too well through VMware Remote Console. So this is a test that's only fair to run when showing this by hooking up the three monitors that I'm using right now for something else for recording this video. So that's a little harder to show you without an external camera. But uh, did vMotion finish? This is the uh, ADD video, it sure did. So let's shut down the server that we're on now. And do a reboot instead of a shutdown. That's my reason. Okay, so now you're seeing the host reboot command sent, and that should trigger things to happen, like Windows, go, there you go, Windows going down. So it asks Windows to go down, and then of course, vCenter is gonna go down as well. Network share just broke. It's all expected stuff. Soon we'll see ESXi hypervisor shutting down over here as well. So you can probably tell I kind of love this little super server. It's really handy for this kind of work because I can show you everything um, with this integrated KVM or IKVM. 
Uh, it's a separate network port right in the motherboard. Just shove in an Ethernet cable and go in the BIOS, set an IP address for it, and boom, you got yourself IKVM, uh, an ability to do power cycling, mounting media, and um, out-of-band video. So this is now kind of a useless window. It's going to get all wonky on us anyway. This goes better in the upper left for when the resolution changes. And I should point out that it would have been really smart of me to do this. Better video quality. Sorry about that. The fonts, everything looks better now. Okay. More network file share warnings barked at me. That makes sense. Now, what did I say earlier? That I need to get ready on the F11 key to do an alternate boot, right? I don't want to boot from ESXi on SATA DOM. I'm going to hit F11 now. Bottom left says invoking boot menu. I like that. It confirms it. I added a speaker to my system so I can actually hear when it's finished with the power and self-test and ready for me to add F11. <clears throat> so that's a little $6 enhancement, adding a speaker to the super server. So what do we want to boot off of? The run core, that's where Windows is hanging out. And earlier we were boot off of this, P0 or the SATA SSD that I told you about. And not the UFI, excuse me, this version, SATA SSD. Okay, so here we go, run core. We should see Windows 10 coming up now. <clears throat> and it should come up fast. Now this time it doesn't really need that USB server because the keyboard and mouse are attached to a USB hub that's attached to the USB 3 port on the back of the super server. So the USB server is really for how do you pass a keyboard and mouse through to a VM so that um, you can operate the VM with a dedicated keyboard and mouse and a triple set of monitors. When you boot natively, you don't need that. The keyboard and mouse should be automatically recognized. So here comes Windows 10. Let's log into it. Okay, we're good. I'm just back down a little bit so you can see the whole screen. Device Manager will be fun to show off again because it's going to be changed. It's going to show things like Display Adapter, no more VMware branded one. So VMware Tools is still installed but doing nothing doesn't start unless it finds what it's supposed to be finding. Uh, what else? Network adapter. It's a native ability to do 10 gig interfaces now because it can see them. Or the 1 gig. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, what else can I show you? There's our eight processors. 16 actually it shows. Storage controller. So now it's booted, you know, just natively to Windows 10. Disk drive, it's going to show run core. And you can see all the other disk drives in the system, so be aware of that. All these other drives are VMFS formatted, so if I try to poke around and look at them, what's going to happen? Not much. Okay, looks like one of the drives is formatted regularly. I think I left a USB key in there. It's fine. OCZ vert. Uh, Nope, that's not the hard drive. There, the sand disk. Yeah, I left a sand disk. Okay. Oh, uh, what else to show you here? Well, uh, keyboard's gonna be think. Well, uh, actually, it's not ThinkPad branded. That's interesting. But I'm using the keyboard right now, and it's obviously working. And I'm grabbing the Logitech mouse, and it's working. All right. So that's a physical Windows 10 machine. And if I uh, speed up time a little, I can run a quick ATTO disk bench for you. And again, speed it up so you see the results right away. Um, what else do you notice as I kick this off? Do you notice that there's a folder called test123 on the desktop? Yes, that was me. Back when I was booted as a VM, I created that folder, and now you're seeing the same run core SSD booted physically. Okay, I just noticed the clock. Uh, that's pretty interesting. 
So I had my virtual machine setting its clock to the host time, the ESXi 60 servers NTP time sync time. And that worked great. It was set to universal UTC time. And then I told the VM, Windows 10, hey, I'm in Eastern. Now that I booted natively, it's confused. It's um, four hours ahead of what it actually is. So I'll have to think about that. It looks like uh, there's a little time implication. I could work around that by just saying, uh, go ahead and NTP set the clock. And then go to the VM setting and say, yeah, don't sync this VM with the ESXi host's clock. So simple workaround. Just set it for NTP. I can go ahead and do that now. And in Windows 10, you'll see things look a little different. Okay, set time automatically is turned on. Well, that's weird. Because <laughs> I know what time it is here. Um, yeah, not really sure why that is. So now you're looking at my local Windows 8.1 machine where we're recording this video from. And this is the actual time, 10.43. Yet, um, it's saying set time automatically. Okay, maybe that's just not working. There you go, it just worked. Yep, so that forced to sync. So the clock was gonna clean itself up if I just waited. Okay, meanwhile the disk benchmark is running in the background. If you're trying to be a little more scientific about it, you don't want to do anything while it's running a benchmark. And bringing up the time sync tool was a little more sluggish when you're abusing the heck out of the hard drive in the background. Okay. It looks like it, uh, it may not be updating the video until the test is done because I took focus away from that window. So we're now in a Java IKVM viewer also not you know built for frame rate or something. So showing the, you those benchmarks from here might not be so amazing, but I could try it anyway, I suppose. So before we had VMware Remote Console or VMRC, trying to show you a benchmark that gave you all of two to four frames a second, which wasn't so amazing, because again, that's a VMware uh, graphical interface we're using, um, GPU, not the actual accelerated GPU graphics that I have the capability of using. Looks like I might have killed ATO Dispatch, which is uh, interesting and not something I've ever seen happen. So I've had some little quirks in this video. Uh, let's see, is the CPU busy? No, but drive C certainly still is. So I think it'll just finish painting the screen and all of a sudden it'll be responsive again. Anyhow, um, so I think I've shown all the, the basics of what I wanted to show you. The physical, the virtual, an idea of how easy it is to use the super server. Um, you should see, it's kind of noteworthy that the 64 gig of RAM are seen here. Eight CPUs you don't really see on Task Manager, Manager anymore, but if you head on over to Resource Manager, you sure as heck do which is just fun <laughs> to see all those CPUs in my home lab. i pretty excited about that. Zero to 15. All right. Uh, is my disk still busy? <laughs> wow. Uh, it looks like ATTO, ATO, whatever people call it. Maybe it's gone kind of rogue on me. All right. Who knows if it cleaned up the litter it made on the hard drive, but you saw the benchmark. It gave me state of three speeds which I ran that earlier in a VM, but I know it's about a 20% degradation at some si file sizes it's writing. It's a little slower in a VM, maybe about 20% overall. All right, let's end this video by trying to push the envelope. Push the envelope. Um, let's see if it notices, sniffs out that we change the number of CPUs again on it and offers the new number. I had to license this product, by the way, it didn't like being booted between a VM and over here. It does some sort of a validity checking. And I didn't like its clock set either. Okay, we're gonna change the number of processors in there. There you go, 16, it did that for me. 
run the test, 3D graphics, DirectX 9, cool airplanes flying around, and <laughs> same. Um, but yeah, I get silky smooth 60, 70 frames a second uh, when I do run that with a natively attached monitor. So I think that's about it until I get an external camera and a tripod and do all that stuff. Uh, that's about all I can show you. Um, so at some later date, and when I'm done with my rebuild, I'll give an even kind of better tour, hopefully. So Spartan browser, there it is. There's a device we're using as a USB server. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this video of value. And thank you for your support of Tinkertry.com. Oh, oh, outtake time. <laughs> How could I forget to show you the ping results? So what I did was I control breaked out, right? We booted to Windows and it got, you know, went away. But that's uh, me pinging vCenter, right? So if we scroll all the way to the top and then just page down during the store, after the uh, vMotion, we're probably going to see it miss a ping. And there it is, one ping. So it's pretty typical for vMotion. Sorry. Can't leave that out. It's fun, right? Thank you for watching again. Bye-bye.